Hey everyone, and welcome back to Behind the Wheel. Today, for episode 3, I have a very special guest. Me and him have done a few videos together in the past, but for some reason, we never went into the career and life of Josh Revel. Today, me and him had a great conversation about everything, from being a former pro esports driver, to what really bugs him about making F1 videos today. I hope you enjoy our conversation. Josh, welcome to the show. How are you today, my friend? Uh, yeah, going okay, mate. Like, <laughs> yeah, what, what else can I say? Just another day in paradise. Uh, if you want to call where I am, paradise. But yeah, um, this is, I think, a fourth year in a row where we record at least one video together. Well, I record you, basically. Um, thank you, obviously. Uh, but yeah, one year, one video each year. That's, that's a bit, actually a bit crazy, but this is the first time I'm ever yeah. actually interviewing you about your career, which I don't know how this didn't right. actually cross my mind. <laughs> well, <laughs> so like episode. three, three videos and we finally get around to how did this all start, man? Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, let's, uh, let's go to the beginning, basically. Um, well, as far back as I could as my research could go right, let's right. go all the way back and i know you started your uh an, your own esports team a while back oh god you found the facebook chat <laughs> possibly yeah okay yeah, yeah like that's very very beginning of it all um <laughs> so like yeah i um like a lot of people, I never had enough money to race. The closest I can get to was, um, you know, racing games, stuff like that. And, you know, from the age of five, Formula One 2001 was the first game I ever had. The first simulator, like proper <laughs> racing game, was um, R Factor. And when the hell was it? Like 2008, 2009? Um, slowly gathered, you know, stuff together, doing sim racing stuff. There were local competitions that I ran in from 2010 to 2016. Um, won a few championships, nothing like major, major where I'm all of a sudden up there with, uh, Lucas Blake or Yo Yano Opmer. Those guys are good. I'm, I'm not that good. Um, but you know, like I got into the uh, Gran Turismo New Zealand Championship and got into the Project Cars Two New Zealand Championship, which was held because I had because I had to actually drive Project Cars Two, which for me is not so much a game but a torture device. Oh yeah, because of just how pathetically bad the game's physics are. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, did all that stuff and. You know, that's where the whole esports uh, thing was because I thought for a while it's like, okay, well, because I did, I did everything casually. Nothing was really sort of, you know, um, stuff that I took seriously um, and all those championships. And I thought, okay, well, let's build something here. And F1 esports was just starting. So it's like, okay, well, let's see how far I can go. It didn't go very far because I was working all the time uh, due to my job. Um, but yeah, before I can move on it any further, like yeah, YouTube happens. So as soon as I set the esports um, deal up, uh, it died just as quickly. And w like you, uh, you said, Gran Turismo, um, what's it called? Uh, the absolute torture device that is Project Cars Two. Um, mm. Did you ever? like try to do esports in any other games like it doesn't even have to be like racing games maybe like counter-strike or i don't know call of duty maybe <laughs> nah i'm never good at any of that kind of stuff like and any other games that i did sort of play it was always just you know it's just sort of uh what, what's the word i'm looking for uh it's just for basically my own self-fulfillment rather than you know mm -hmm. going at it competitively like i i could i i know what those cod players do it's just like i can't do that like i'm just not that good um 
Like my younger brother, Keanu, he does a lot of uh, the Fortnite stuff, and I look at what he does. It's like, how the hell do you do this? Like, yeah. it's just all, I see, yeah. all I see is him just mashing the damn keyboard, yeah. <laughs> and and things things happen. It's just like uh, I, I don't know. You, you you live in that fairy world. I'll just you know. I'll stay here writing stories about drivers who are going to admonish me later on. That's my idea of living. Yeah, I always see like that stuff on like Instagram or something like that, where they're just doing the craziest stuff, and I'm like, yeah, I'm, I'm good. I'm just not gonna even gonna touch that game anymore. But yeah, <laughs> the only, the only other thing that I can say I'm competitive at in gaming is um, <laughs> as embarrassing as this is is a uh, geo guesser because i i'm all oh, I, I love the geography aspect so I, I, I love all that stuff and people out there that go on to uh, like custom maps they'll know that i've made a couple of these custom maps of like racetracks and they'll go and say so, so, oh how hard can this be and it's just like this this uh the sphere of a racetrack in argentina that's three pixels and you can't even see you can't even see the outhouse that's uh, that's in the infield. It's like, where where am I? <laughs> it's uh, just the cruelest thing ever. But you know, guys that are good at this, you know, they can look they can look at the texture of the clay by the road and they know where they are. You know, yeah, I'm my, almost at that yeah. stage. I I know that there's ways that you can find out where you are based on like with my bollards and stuff. But mm. I don't know. I guess it takes the fun out of it. But it's always good to like. You know, to to go on the jewels and you know rack up heaps of wins, and it's it's good, uh, it's sort of it's good fun for sure. But apart from, apart from GeoGuessr and iRacing, there's not much I touch nowadays, and there's not much I'm good at either. And even that stuff, I'm not very good at. Yeah, actually, my friend um, that I I play games with sometimes he plays GeoGuessr a lot, actually, and I was actually with him a few like weeks ago and then he was like let's play geoguessr and then i was like oh how like like what you said how hard how hard could it be and then he's we're in like this random forest and he's like yeah that car looks like it's from like uzbekistan or something like that and he like looks at the trees and i'm like how the hell are you doing it's like a white tree and then it's like <laughs> yeah that's a tree but how does it look like it's from like uzbekistan and he got within like 500 feet and i'm like what the he- how how do you yeah it's, cra- it's, it's crazy yeah it is crazy when that happens but then there'll be there'll be some softball sometimes when you're in the when you're in the jewels <clears throat> um i definitely got a i definitely got a nod from the racing gods final round of the jewels <clears throat> and um planted us in the location it was yas marina circuit it's like oh well okay i know where i am <laughs> unfortunately the other guy didn't so yeah it's it's just about knowing where you are but again like when you play it that many times and it's fun it's addictive and you just pick up on things and like for example when you're in brazil you could tell like there's just certain elements certain sort of textures of clay where it's just like oh okay there we are you yeah. learn based on the textures of clay how freaking boring am i making this podcast right now <laughs> <laughs> no nah, man this is this is great content <laughs> No, stick around, people. You're here to find out about my career, and I'm talking about clay. <laughs> no, but it's all good, man. Um, but uh, let's just kind of switch gears, uh, pun intended, um, to a little bit of motorsport because I know, uh, like later on, you got, I believe, a job at um, Velocity News. Uh, in, Velocity News and in, Auto Car New yeah. Zealand. So I was I was operating two sort of I wouldn't say operating two sites, but I was writing for two sites. At yeah, at the same time. At the same time, alongside that, the channel was like at the time where I first accepted the job. That was when I was at twenty thousand subscribers, and it was just mm. snowballing. Wow, and uh, like, how, did they basically did they come to you and offer, or did you? uh basically approach them and um, like this how did it so so i guess it relates to the channel um but we'll get into that in, in a bit but this was the time where i and like i said twenty thousand subscribers on the channel <clears throat> it was snowballing i was being noticed in the paddock quite a bit like i knew a few i knew a few people in the paddock for sure 
but quite a few more were coming up saying, "Hey man, love the channel, stuff like that." And it was it was very weird. <laughs> I, I I love you know the support, but it's still you know it, it is a bit strange when you do get noticed like that, especially from people who wouldn't bat an eyelid before. Um, but um, with Velocity News, um. The guy who founded and ran the site, uh, Simon Chapman, he was leaving to go over to Speed Cafe over in Australia. And uh, there was an opening, you know, opening there. And I was looking to get out of my job at HB New Zealand because I was kind of just over it, you know. I sort of wanted to get more involved with, uh, with motorsport, especially writing stuff. And the opportunity came up to uh, be a journalist there. And it's like, well, I don't have any qualifications. And he's like, well, no, I'll just get you to speak with uh, the guy who owns the site, Mark Patch. <clears throat> and Patch is a legend in New Zealand motorsport and what he does. And, you know, um, he's got history and he's got, you know, a lot of credentials, even if he's, you know, <laughs> relatively controversial in the eyes of some people. But yeah, he he liked the work that I did, and then he asked me to go away and um, produce about three mock articles, I think. You know, just to see where my writing level was at. Uh, he liked them. Then he offered me a job where I was basically writing articles for both sites, as well as managing some social media aspects. So it was a lot, but it was a it was an open door. And uh... so yeah, it's um. Yeah, and I did that for about two or three months. I can't remember, two or three months. Um, and the thing is about the journalism aspect is that, and anyone out there who does journalism would know what I'm talking about, you know, it could say in the contract that you start work at nine and end at five, but that's not how it works. You're constantly, you're constantly working. You know, you're always chatting to to contacts to try and get ahead of the curve. You're always trying to be the first to, to, to break the news. So you're having to be on all the time. You're really having to sort of be ready to, to break the news, to get it out there, to, uh, to get the scoop, to get the clicks and to make sure that you're always ahead of the competition, which, you know, setting president is um, setting clicks and views ahead of getting the news out was a little bit of what drove me away from journalism because I didn't like that the first thought when it came to all of this is that we just needed to get something out just so you know we're you know we're, we're there in front of people's faces and, and we're getting all these clicks and so on like obviously that's part of F1 YouTube you know, especially if there's a new circuit and you react to it. If there's a popular topic, you make a video on it, stuff like that. But, you know, um, still, it just wasn't, it wasn't one aspect that I liked. And the channel was also suffering because I was hardly making content because it was hard to because I had no time. So I ultimately had to decide. And about that time, the pandemic was kicking off. So there was no guarantee about, you know, income or anything like that. I had to choose whether or not I wanted to do YouTube full time or journalism, and neither one was guaranteed. I just said I had to go with my gut there. But yeah, it was an interesting time working there, and I definitely learned a lot. But uh, I, I learned a lot when it comes to how to write, how to structure, how to manage a lot of things. So it was brief, uh, brief time there. Probably wasn't one hundred percent comfortable. But it definitely helped me learn in a lot of ways. And uh, sticking with a little bit of journalism, um, this is actually from a while ago. Um, while while doing the quote unquote research for this for this episode, um, I stumbled upon a photo of a newspaper from a while back. Um, of you actually showing off a new, like, I think it's a driving simulator? 
Oh my god. <laughs> a while ago that, in 2012. How the hell did you find that? <laughs> uh yeah, that was um God, I was in high school back then. And um it was this um driver safety simulator deal that they had at a local town center. Mm-hmm. And there was this dude with a camera there. And and, and like uh, uh, no, well, there was a driving simulator instructor who's also in the photo, I think. Yeah. And he's like, look to your right. I'm like, huh? And there's a guy with a camera there. I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, because you look shocked right, you. in it. <laughs> You're like, huh? Uh, 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 no, I was more a case of, uh, like, <laughs> who are you? I did not consent to this. <laughs> no, I had no idea. Eh? Like, it was just completely out of the blue. But, you know, like, um, it then came out and it's just like, okay, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Uh, thank you for catching me in all my glory, I guess. Yeah, that yeah, weird moments like that for sure. Uh, but yeah, now going back uh, to what you were actually talking about before, um, uh, like you're talking about, I, feel like I forgot what show you were on a different podcast, but I, I completely forgot. Um, that so many podcasts, eh? Yeah. <laughs> but um, you uh basically you said went full time. You went. Uh, into the deep end basically of youtube during the pandemic and you decided to go full-time during the pandemic talk me through that decision because that that couldn't have been an easy one no because at that time um the pandemic happened yes but my income from youtube was barely enough you know like it was it was at a level where it was just like, I can keep a roof over my head and not have a lot else more. Mm-hmm. What it came down to was the sort of potential and what I wanted to get out of it. You know, like um, a lot of my content is story driven, whatever I can get done in a week, which is just not enough time to do what I really want to do. But, you know, and this isn't a knock at them at all. Um, but, you know, like you have a lot of F1 YouTubers, they're vloggers. You know, they talk about the race that's just come, sort of, you know, unboxing stuff and more power to them. You know, we, we need those different types of content creators out there. You know, the vloggers, the podcasters, uh, mm. any any type. And, and there's different types of stories to talk about from different types of, you know, uh periods of time whatever um i'm all about telling you know stories and stuff like that with journalism a lot of the time it's regurgitating information which is quite commonly known you know you get an embargo on a press release and it's like okay transcribe this into what looks like your words and then you know, have it scheduled for a post out there. Otherwise, you know, you have breaking news and you parrot that. You know, you watch a race and you basically just, you know, you write down what you see in front of you and you try and sort of make it seem somewhat interesting. It sounds like a very crude way to describe journalism, but I guess that's just how I viewed it, was that it didn't quite fulfill my needs and desires it wasn't quite what i was looking for like you're you're telling news rather than telling a story if that makes sense and i was at a crossroads where the channel was kind of dying in momentum i was getting one video out every two three weeks and it's like okay i need to decide now whether or not I want to continue the channel or continue with the journalism career. And I thought there's more potential in the YouTube channel. It's more what I want to do. And at that stage I was approaching 50,000 subscribers or over it. And I went through with it. And my, um, my, uh, my choice was vindicated when I uh, saw my first paycheck from, uh, from YouTube for the month and it was seven hundred dollars it's like yeah hey that will have me eating for minutes 
and then <laughs> you won't be able to keep a roof over my head because damn inflation and you know all that good stuff where you know people can't buy houses nowadays and this is just helping my cause yeah it was um it was it was rough man but like i kept at it you know produced the content got it out there and started to stabilize got up there and here we are now and it's just ticked over 360,000 subscribers now and while it is going at a bit of a snail's pace you know like uh Still. Actually, w- while we're on this, man, uh, truth truth be told, um, my original plan was to hit 100,000 subscribers and then then retire. Really? Well, well yeah. Because um, selfishly, I kind of did want that plaque, you know? Mm. But I was also not quite too happy with some aspects of, of the channel and what it brought. Yeah. Um, but again, I think what stopped me from stopping the channel was I just like I like doing it too much, you know. Um, even in my rough days where I just don't want to do any of this work because you know I'm doing it every single day of my life for four years now. I think at some stage you're gonna get a little bit. You know, like you're going to stare at the screen and you're just going to repeat the words, I hate you to the program that you're on, you know? Yeah. yeah. Um, so you've got to have total dedication to what you're doing. And I, I do. I, I love it to death, you know? I'm, I'm surrounded with just books and books of all this stuff, residual knowledge to the heavens, you know? Um, like... I I just got ideas for years. Like there's 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 video ideas from 2019 that I haven't moved on yet because it just kept on getting pushed back. Um, you know the next dozen videos are already lined up, so that's three months of content already lined up. Like it, it's it's a never ending thing. Um, not to say I'm not trying to sound cocky here. It's it's more a case of you know trying to trying to quantify how much I love doing this. I love the sport. I love telling stories. I love the manner of which I do it for the most part. Um, I get a great fulfillment out of it. So yeah, I think it definitely was the right choice at the end of the day, at the end of the day. Um, yeah, it definitely. When you look, when I want to look back on it, it was, it was a tough call. It was a case of, it could have gone either way, but yeah, don't regret it one bit. And like, uh, obviously, you found like a whole bunch of success now. Like you just said, it ticked over three hundred uh, sixty something, I believe, right now. Um, mm. But let's uh, literally go back to the very, very beginning of your channel, and you start. You posted an Andrea Moda video mm. that yeah ended up blowing up right now. That was a, that was weird. That was just weird. <laughs> um, like, all right, I like. But yeah, why that, that Andrea? A, that, that was that was a that was a very weird. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, okay, so I'll tell you, I'll tell you the story of that. So, um, I don't want to say my pioneer because I'm not, but um, well, yeah, I would say before that. I came along, before I came along, F1 YouTube was virtually non-existent, yeah. and it was even more non-existent. Um, before 2018, I think I remember the only F1 YouTube channels that I knew of that I followed pre 2017 was WTF1, as they were pretty much the only game in town, and uh, Shandy Vlogs, and she did a lot of the vlogging stuff as well. And again, very few people in town at that time. Uh, and it was cool because she had the connections with Salva, which was, you know, it was great to see. Um, but obviously, a lot's changed since then. Um, 2018, yeah, 2018, I wanted to know about the Andrea Motor story, you know, because it was just weird. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought there was no videos on it. I'm like, okay, why well, can't I just make it myself? <clears throat> so I ended up making it. And at that time... Um, 
I was poor. I was poor to a point where basically it was a surprise that I was able to pay any amount of board at all. Um, <clears throat> I had a I had a mounted laptop, a five dollar headset which was broken in half, but still had the microphone on it, so I just used that. I based it to the gills, which is why the audio was so terrible, and. <laughs> I just produced it. Now, initially, it was meant to be a super serious, you know, oh, this is, you know, what happens and, you know, all that kind of, you know, proper Netflix rubbish. Uh, but you could see as the video progresses, it just gets more and more toward what I would do now, which is sort of incorporating, I don't know if you want to call it humor, but just more my way of talking. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. It's just the way I talk. People find it humorous, so you know, more power to them. <laughs> yeah, it's, um, I, I, yeah, I I released it, and it did a thousand views in whatever it was. And I was like, cool, whatever. Um, and I was going to do something else. What, what was the other video I was going to do? Uh, there was some other video that I had in the works. Uh, oh, yeah, it was... Um, the second video in that exact format was going to be on the kidnapping of Juan Manuel Fangio in the Cuban Grand Prix of 19... Crap. Was it 1954? Uh, I can't... Why can I, I not remember that exact year? Um, but yeah, it, like... Uh, yeah, it yeah, I, I, st I still remember... I, uh, 1958, yeah. yeah. I still remember exactly how that video played for the first 30 minutes and I can recreate it perfectly. Um, but at some point I, it, it just got lost. Um, and then in 2019, about six months after I made it, it just blew up for some reason, you know, overnight. It's like, what the hell? Okay, cool. And of the quarter million views, you know, that I got, and all the comments that came in, there was something, the, the most common comment and all of that really, really struck a chord with me. And it was really, really motivating. And that comment was, get a better microphone. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it, was, it was just like, it was like, yeah, I know it's crap. Um, but I thought, okay, I've got this wave of momentum now and it's cool. But I knew exactly what I wanted to do. Like there were some channels around that were producing content, which it gave you all the information, but it it was in a very casual manner. It was in a it was in a way that was easily digestible for people that didn't know anything about it. But it gave you everything that you needed to know, um, you know. And I like the idea of the animated presentation. I can't say there was one. Was, I can't say there was one specific only source that I got it from, but probably the biggest influence was Alex Myers. Um, so, yeah, because um, I watched a lot of his stuff and I thought, okay, this is cool format. So I was like, okay, um, see what I could do. But again, I was still I was still poor as hell, so I couldn't afford a graphics graphics tablet. So what's the next best thing? Bitmojis. Yeah, that's of course gonna that's going to work. And it's like, I just used that and like it, it, it passed for a while. But as soon as I got enough money to buy a $100 graphics tablet, which was the cheapest one you can get, hmm. it's like, okay, cool. Let's get it and just work with it. Uh, produced, produced the dude, um, which hopefully is going to get redone very soon, depending upon whether or not I have three minutes in a day to rub together. And yeah, it just uh, sort of went from there. But it was a very, it was an unexpected success, um, <clears throat> you know. Um, and so I set the wheels in motion for what was going to be the first video, which was the UGE Day video. But on the day I was going to export the video and upload it, it corrupted, and. The file was lost forever. And the only thing that carried over from the original video to the one that became WTF happened to UGE, UGE Day, which is one of the more popular videos, is the Joe Pesci comment. 
apart from that, I don't remember anything which was interchangeable. But so uh, I just needed to produce something whilst there was some amount of momentum there. And so, okay, just, just a short video on just something that I know of, which is easy to do, can be done in a day or two. It's like Zeltvik, the, uh, the Austrian Grand Prix of 1964, you, you know, the one that predates the Red Bull Ring. And, you know, I got no idea why I thought that'd be a good video, but yeah, <laughs> produce that. And there were people that were watching it that were like, oh, you've got something here. And I just kept on producing stuff from there. And eventually with the WTF happened to Dan Tictum, it started the ball rolling. Yeah, I actually wanted to ask about that, uh, the WTF happened to Dan Tictum. Because I know uh. that ended up um, with you actually in contact with Dan Tictum. Yes. yes. How, did, how um, did you guys talk about that? <laughs> okay so i produced the video right and it got some good moment and like this was about the time where the channel was starting to snowball mm -hmm. you know went over the thousand subscribers and which was a big deal you know it's a big deal for a youtuber to get over a thousand subscribers yeah. it sounds it sounds ridiculous you know to some people that look at me it's just like oh look at where you are why is a thousand subscribers important it's just like well it's important for people at the time like it really is and got it the video was doing well and then <laughs> i remember uh, what what morning was it was it a sunday morning or something oh, it was some morning anyway uh pff, phone goes off see the notification uh instagram dan tickton wants to talk to you it's like shit <laughs> like crap that's a um, menacing man yeah, Dan Tickton wants to like, talk to you. That's all. Yeah, because he had a reputation. And the um <clears throat> the message, not verbatim, but it basically read good video, fair comments. I know I've made things difficult for myself. Um, and like thanks for the well wishes or whatever. It's like, oh, okay. No, sweet. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> he, he didn't he didn't scold me. That's all right. No, I've had a few interactions with him. Um mm -hmm. Yeah, because I remember. No, 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 no. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Um, <laughs> no, I think he con I think he contacted me after I made the video about him being in the Williams Driver Academy. Yeah. Um, but I've always found him to be. He's a very unique character in the sense that you know, like, you'd either love him or hate him. You, you know, I could see where he'd rub people the wrong way, but personally, he never aggrieved me. I always found him to be totally fair, you know? Mm -hmm. And what I find rich is that there are people out there that say these guys need to have characters, but as soon as they develop a character, for better or for worse, they say, you know, this is not what motorsport needs. It's like, okay, what, the, what do you need? You know, like yeah. occasionally someone's going to wear the black hat, you know? Um, yeah, it was, yeah, personally, I've never had any bad interactions with him at all. Um, and yeah, for someone of his talent levels, I always just wanted to see the best for him. And, you know, like it is unfortunate because he, he definitely could have been on the road to formula one had, you know, some things gone his way. Yeah. I think if he was still in that Williams Academy, I don't think we would have seen Logan Sargent in F1. Personally uh, speaking. I think, I, no, I, I, like I, with I Williams, know. I mean. With Williams. Yeah, I, I don't know. That that Academy is the weirdest thing mm. I've ever seen in my life. Because you look at the lineup, and it's just like, that's yeah. a stonks lineup. Yeah. And then there's Roy Nassani. Yeah, that's what that's like, <laughs> Actually, I think he's out of it, isn't he? He's now no, he's, out of he's that academy. Still in it, I think. Uh, oh my god, he he's, he's like been. he's like that. He's like that cockroach you can't flush down the toilet. Um, yeah, it's it's a damn good lineup of drivers, and personally, the one of the bunch, and I'm the uh, captain of the fan club. Apparently, 
is uh, Frank Colapinto. And yeah. uh, p- people people sometimes ask, oh, why do you think Franco Colapinto is uh, the bee's knees? And I say to them, okay, put it to you this way. Uh, he came over to New Zealand for the Toyota Racing Series. Yes, of course, Toyota Racing Series was going to get a mention here because, of course, it does. Um, and he was with uh, Kiwi Motorsport. And they're a good team, but at that stage, they weren't, they weren't there. They weren't the best team. M2 competition is our prema, you know? Mm. And they were always the best, and they always won the championship, and they always had damn good drivers. Um, you know, M2 in 2020 had Igor Fraga, who won the championship, uh, Liam Lawson, Yuki Tsunoda, um, and shit. Uh, this, oh, my God. There's someone. There was someone else in that team that I'm forgetting right now. But there was also in that field Kyle Collette, um, you know, uh, Gregoire Saucy as well. Best name um, in motorsport. Yeah, Saucy. <laughs> My God. And, uh, yeah, Cole Pinto was in Kiwi Motorsport, perhaps not the best team. Um, but he almost won the championship. He almost won the Grand Prix. And he was visibly fast. Like... You know when a you know when a really talented driver gets into not the best team like like a Logan Sargent at uh Shirelles in Formula 3 in 2020 yeah where they take the car where it has no business being that team did not win a race at all and then Sargent in that year wins a race in Sochi gets seventh in the championship gets a few podiums and it's just like what that's never happened like no driver's ever done this with that team and, you know, Colapinto was just noisily going faster than these guys. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I always bring up the fact that, uh, you know, Liam Lawson was teammates with Yuki Tsunoda twice in his career. And both times he beat him, which was in Euro Formula and Toyota Racing Series. But what Colapinto did in that year, I was just like, I am a fan of this dude. Because he's quick. Like, he's a special kind of quick. And you see in F3, he leaves his teammates behind, you know? So I want to see the best for this dude, for sure. Um, and now that he's in the Williams Driver Academy, that gives me hope. But yeah, I don't know. You, you never know because A, that, that academy is stacked. And B, like Tictum, there's no guarantee. And sorry, just a quick update. Wayne Asani is not in the Williams Driver Academy. So thank God, some good news at last. If we that. if we can have uh not quite. Uh there's still some things that need to be sorted out. A la you know. Uh, no, I'm not gonna get into that. <laughs> I don't want I don't want to alienate <laughs> half the audience. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Before we go any further, I have to tell you about mode push racing gloves. Hard on your sim racing, these gloves are ideal. Expertly designed to provide the driver with optimal comfort and grip. Tested and developed by a professional racing driver means that these products are held to the highest standard. External seams ensure the maximum comfort and fit. Vented mesh panels along the inside of the fingers and air-layered fabric ensure unmatched airflow and breathability. The palm is made from a tactile leather featuring silicone grips and index finger smartphone touch capability. When you're wearing these gloves, you'll only have one mode. And that's mode push. Go to the link in the description. Go to the link in the description and use code behind the wheel for ten percent off your purchase. And now on to the rest of the episode. But uh, yeah. actually, I, I do actually want to talk about because um, I think a little bit ago you said I forgot. I already forgot his name because I have a terrible memory. But you mentioned a YouTuber who influenced you a little bit. But are there Alex any Alex Myers? Alex Myers, yes. Um, are there any other YouTubers that? kind of inspired you to make videos and even not even like f1 videos if like maybe because i know i did this when i was like really 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 young where i just like got a camera and just started filming like random stuff and then posted on youtube did you ever do that uh okay so of all time you know of all time youtubers that influenced me 
I think the first I think the first YouTuber I ever watched and subscribed to was uh, <coughs> Ray William Johnson. <laughs> yeah, so him. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Thanos Gaming has oh, so many countless people have. Yeah. Um, you know, especially Vanos, I was like, that's got to be the life, being a YouTuber. Being a YouTuber has got to be the life. Then I got the life, I'm like, this is not much of a life. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> I've, worked a, I've worked a lot of jobs, a lot of physically hard jobs, but this one really digs into your mentality when you work for 3,000 hours a week. Um, yes, yeah, so, yeah, Vanos, Alex Myers. In terms of motorsport content, two channels uh did i followed before youtube kicked off slap shoes nascar youtuber and um black flags matter darian um you know uh both of them kraken guys work with them before you know um and it's it is mad when you see some of these youtubers you know that you like and then you know a couple months later, they're like, oh, watch this guy. He's an amazing, you know, so-and-so. It's just like, this is nuts. <laughs> like, but, yeah. Uh, did anyone else? Uh, uh, I don't know. I think I think just that collective group of people uh, did influence me <coughs> uh, to sort of go on and be who I am. Oh, uh, it's, this is kind of not, it's not really on top. Like, um, I actually want to mention this because I know you made um, a video on Sean Galel, uh a little bit ago. Sure. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because uh, uh, again, ha- like for people who have watched my channel, you guys know that I'm I'm half Indonesian, um, and my <laughs> my mom, uh, I forgot. I think it was the, after the first ever video that we made together. My mom like looked on your channel and then. Like she saw the Sean Galel video, she's like, "Oh, how dare he!" And then went on like a, a rant about Sean Galel. But yeah, I just wanted to mention that real quick. So uh, that's my mom. Yeah. Um. Um. I'm very sorry. <laughs> You're in the bad books of my mom. Apparently. Uh. Well, that's uh, it's good. To, it's it's good to know. I'm, I'll make amends for sure. <laughs> no, it was it was like it was he did he did become a bit of a meme. I, I don't know. There are drivers like that though, where it's it's just like ah, oh, step too far, man. Mm. In terms of the level that they're at, it was a weird thing with Sean. It was like, what's the end game with him? And the aim was Formula One, but it's like, how are you gonna ever get there? Like, yeah. um, you know, and I, I think I said in the video that he seems a driver that would prosper in GT uh, cars, you know, and the and the you know. And the GT scene, and he's doing that, you know? Yeah, he's he's doing a lot of good well. stuff in, in LMP2. Well, you know, it's like, you know, out and out pace isn't a necessity, and knowing the skills he's acquired and what he's got, it's like he, he can fit that mold perfectly fine, especially if he's got a good team. Mm. And he got a good team, and he's doing well, you know? And it's just like, okay, fulfilling the prophecy, exactly what I thought was going to be happening. Um, but yeah, definitely, definitely no ill will against them at all. Mm-hmm. Um, like, if I have ill will against people, against drivers, well, you're gonna know and <laughs> make it pretty obvious. Uh, oh, damn. damn it! Wait, hold on. It closed. Hold on. Technical difficulties. There oh, we go. Oh, no. right, your, your mom, your mom hasn't taken us down, is, is she? <laughs> She's listening into this conversation. Um, oh dear. But um, actually, because again, while doing research, I actually somehow stumbled upon this. You are at the moment, to my knowledge, the only F one YouTuber to have a dedicated page on fandom dot com. So what? Yeah. You have a dedicated page on uh, the world. The world fandom. is definitely coming to an end. <laughs> yeah, I was. Every, I, everyone, repent your sins. <laughs> the end times are coming. You're gonna face God soon, Ron. 
the Nick, the next worst thing that can possibly happen is if someone puts a Wikipedia pa- page of me up there. I'm actually it's like, sure, let, let Jimmy Jackson, a dude here in New Zealand who's got over a million subscribers, not have one, but me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> uh, again, again it's it's all very it's all very strange to me you know the um <clears throat> I, I love the fans to death i just still somehow never am able to sort of um come to grips with the following if that makes sense because i'm still making the content for for the reasons that you know i started out on you know, I wanted to tell stories and I love the sport. It's still remained the same. So when I have that going on, it's like, okay. <laughs> like dedicated discords, dedicated fandom, uh, wicked to be uh, whatever it is. I stumbled across that. Someone made a Reddit, um, whatever it is. Um, is it, is it Reddit channel? What it, I, I don't know. Like I'm Reddit. showing, I'm showing my, now. I'm showing my age of 28 years old. I can't get a grasp of this. Yeah, Reddit's such a beautiful place. I love Reddit. Oh, so oh it, it, it is. You you get some absolute yeah. gems on there. Everyone and on Reddit some, is good. Yeah. There's no nothing bad that ever happens on Reddit. It's all well, it's a lot more digestible than F1 Twitter though. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know what's bad when F1 you make Reddit Twi- look good. F1 like. Twitter, F1 Twitter is a war zone. Yeah, I was just, you make one very small comment like, "Hey, maybe we shouldn't do it," and it's just bombarded with just the yeah, worst the, the, you'll, stuff. You'll just make a, seen. you'll make a comment. You'll make a comment about how you know uh, that was a good that was a good save there from Lewis. And it's just like, what you hate, Max? It's like, what? Yeah, the oh where, my God. where did that come from? Like, uh, by actually, since we're here, if if y'all want to know whose side I'm on, Team Max, Team Lewis, I'm on technically neither side. Team I Albon. love both drivers. Eh? <laughs> team Albon, Team Albon. Are, are you your, your Team Albon? We're Team Albon. Ah, that that's fair enough. That's that's fair equal <laughs> equal territory there. Yeah, don't. No, don't there's, there's he's not, Team there's, Albon. There's not Everybody. a lot of drivers. <laughs> Go Team Albon. There's not yeah. a lot of drivers I hate. You know, like some would say, "Oh, you hate you hate you hate Lance, do you?" It's just like, no. It's just like <laughs> what I know about his junior career and what happened. It's like it has kind of scarred it. My view on how things happen, but yeah. he's in F1 now, you know, and he's improved to a point where it's like he's earned his place there. <clears throat> it took him a while, but he's in that place there. Um, there was a driver here in New Zealand called Simon Wills, who back in uh, the late 90s, 2000s, he was doing a lot of open wheel stuff in Australasia. He was never the most naturally gifted driver, but he put the work in. And yes, he uh, he hung around in the series. He had the money to do things. But he put the work in, and he got the results. And then he got to the big leagues, and he was on fire. He was he was fast, you know. So, you know, yeah, he he's, he was never going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread. But he paid his dues, and you've got to view him how he is today. And you know, Lance is in a much better place in terms of his ability. Than what he was in 2017, where he was sawing at the, de- at, the at the wheel like a blind woodsman, um, you know, and where he was, you know, trying to win the appraisal of people who were never going to give him a chance. So, yeah, um, yeah. And term- <laughs> I don't hate any one particular driver. I just love the sport. I love seeing, I love seeing the cream rise to the top. <coughs> And that's just a, I, I real I really just don't. I, I, the only thing I would say nowadays is I just want Ferrari to be properly good. Ah, but but that's that just, happen. that's just part of every F1 fan, you know, yeah. every F1 fan just wants to see Ferrari good. And now that Freddie Vassier is in there, I have total confidence that because the Italians are no longer running the Italian team that they will find success. Because history proves 
every time you take the control out of the Italians' hands for Ferrari, that's when they start winning. Yeah, exactly. Circa Jean Tot. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> when Jean Tot was wasn't there. And he was French. And he was French, yes. And he was small as well. So <laughs> you know, small, small French people make the world go around, or at least make Ferrari go to the top of the tree. Uh, right. Yeah, but uh, other other than just wanting Ferrari to do well in terms of drivers and stuff, like honestly, I I I just like seeing good racing, and I love seeing talented drivers do well and all that stuff. Like, I really don't fly <laughs> the flag for anyone anymore. Mm. If you want to believe me, <laughs> but I, actually on on Twitter, have you ever had like a, a um I don't want to say like a argument, but like a like a bad experience on Twitter after a comment because like there was one time where i remember i was i made a comment about i get like lance stroll it wasn't like a bad one i just said like uh he should have uh gone to i think it was gp2 instead of uh f1 and then some guy was like oh if you think that what about max Verstappen?" and i was like well come on i was like it's that's uh that's not the same at all have you ever had something mm. like that at all? Uh, I think at some stage, dude, things were just getting too toxic on social media. for, And that wasn't based on the increase in popularity. It was just, I think throughout 2021, it just got bad. Oh, yeah. Um, it got horrible. You know? And it was, it was such a freaking shame because, you know, for a lot of 2021, it was a damn good season. It was yeah. it was so good to see those two titans go at each other, you know, and opposing teams too, um, you know. And we could say about what happened at the end, and it was a sh- it was uh, excuse me French, it was a shit way to end the championship, but it was still a good season. But it unearthed a lot of extremely bad, toxic fans. And yeah. there'll be people that will say, oh, it was Team LH, just the Orange Army. So it's like, no, it was people all around the freaking paddock here. But there was a lot of bad eggs. And there's people sniping at each other. It was just not a fun place to be. Yeah. And people will take things the wrong way about drivers that I would talk about and think that I was backing one particular horse. And it's like, oh, just... I can't. I'm like, for my own sanity and for my own sort of mental well-being, I stopped really looking at comments. I will read DMs if people want to message me. I'll, I'll try and get back to them because that's a more direct way to you know communicate. It's like cool. We don't have to be public about anything, you know. Yeah. Um and. I really did not want to be that dude that ignored people and fans because I I wanted to be the dude that interacted with people, but like yeah, at some stage it just got bad. It becomes too much. Like, nah. It becomes too much, yes. Um but again, if people want to message me on like Insta or Twitter or email me or go to Discord or whatever, it's like yeah, okay. I'll, I'll, I can't guarantee I'll get back to you soon, but I'll try and get back to you. Um, you know, because you know, with the support that you give, it's it means the world. So, yeah, but it's you. You never know what you're going to get when you look at some of your notifications, and it could definitely put a damper on your day. So it's like, ah, uh, yeah, um. Yeah, it's it sucks the state really of F1 social media at the moment. Yeah, of F1 it's itself to be honest with you as well. It's it's just yeah yeah. It, it doesn't it doesn't help when certain people in the paddock are sniping at each other. You know yeah. Uh, whether it's uh, you know, you look at some of the comments from uh, Toto from Christian. It's like, can you guys just stop? Yeah, you know? it's just adding fuel or, to the or fire. social media or social media admins doing some of the, some of their rounds. I won't name <laughs> which teams I think are being children here, but it's like you know how toxic this is, and you continue to stoke the fire. You continue to vilify 
and spread hate towards certain fan bases, you know, and again, this is all very sort of a general thing. There's not one culprit here. And like, yeah, it just, it pisses me off to no end, man. Like, great. Make this more toxic. I'm sure it's going to get you more clicks. I'm sure that it's really going to help you, you know, with the fans that you have. Good for you. Thank you for making F1 Twitter even more unbearable. Yeah. And it's, it sucks because I, it's very obviously, it's going to be basically very short. It's going to be like a, a meme account on like uh, Instagram will like repost that. And it'll be funny for like three seconds. And then it's like, okay, now it's everyone's taking it like a joke, like way too seriously for something. And then people use it. As like again, like fuel for the fire, where it's like, oh, but they did this, and then it's like, but they did that, and then it's, it's just becomes mm. very stupid. But uh, yeah, let's move on to a little bit of a lighter topic. Let's <laughs> get a little bit let's more get, happy. My happy. God, man. But yeah, um, let's happy vibes, mate. Happy, happy, happy. <laughs> but um, I'll just do because uh, we're getting near near. To the um to like wrapping up a little bit, um, but what was your 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 favorite video to make? Basically, the one that was most fun, if you if you have one, and the most frustrating to make. Best way to describe this, um, the most fun videos to make are the ones that don't do well. The most frustrating ones are the ones that for some reason blow up. It's just, it's just this weird thing where I push the video out. It's just like, I want this done. I hate this thing. It's rushed. It's crappy. The quality is rubbish. I hate it. Get it out. I release it. I wake up the next morning, quarter of a million views. It's like, what the? Why? Why do you digest this? And then I'll make a video. I'm like, oh, I love this thing. It's been fun to make. And then it's just like, it doesn't even break 50K. It's like, why why do you do this um okay the most <coughs> fun to make uh, in terms of the most frustrating i can't give you an answer because you know i made so many damn videos um the most f- i don't know if i want to call it fun i'll just say the most satisfactory video i made was on sabina schmitz um because it was something I wanted to do for a while, but I just wanted to make sure it was done right because she had quite a following. She was dearly loved in the community, but I didn't want to make it, you know, as a reaction to her death. I wanted it to be a, a proper tribute, yeah. which means that it had to be done right. So I did it. And... um I tried to emphasize more her character than her simply just being, you know, a woman who drove fast on the Nürburgring, you know, which is what people look at things in a very, very, you know, tunnel vision view. Like an upcoming video is Senna v Prost, which is a story that's been told millions of times all over but no one um i'll make that exact same video (laughs) very few people ever tell the story from a neutral aspect Hmm. there's always some kind of bias to it and that bugged me it's like why are we not looking at this from a from a neutral perspective but the other thing that i get annoyed about is People make this all about 89 and 90 Suzuka. That's the base of it, you know? No one talks about how pretty much as soon as the checkered flag dropped 1993 Adelaide, they became close, you know? They were calling it, well, Senna was calling Prost almost every day and just talking about, you know, if one had wanted to come back, uh, Life after Formula One, um, the weather, anything, you know? 
um, there is such a rich, rich human story to Senna v. Prost that no one talks about. And that's what I want to get into, you know? Um, I want to talk about not so much what made it memorable um, to, F, to normal F1 fans. Of course, that's a big part of it. But I also want to get into what it meant for the for those two protagonists, you know? Mm. I want to talk about the importance that they had as individuals to to everyone around them, really. With Sabine, that was a big part of it because she was such a such a character. And it still hurts that, you know, like that was rough when she died. And I know that it sounds really weird, you know, um, to say like, you never met this woman before, you know, like she was queen of the Nürburgring. Cool. It's like, you know, so many people were sad about her loss because she was just such a great person. And to be lost at a 51st birthday, I think that's not an age to die. And especially someone of that character, you know, uh, and you see the comment section of the video and like people are still teared up about it. Um, but it was a good tribute. I was happy with it. Um, when it came out, but the big thing that was a vindication and was it actually broke me was I got a message from, uh, her niece and she, Thanks me for making the video. She said it was a great tribute for not only what she achieved in motorsport, but who she was. Um, that that broke me, like, because yeah, from fans to get you know compliments about videos, that's great. I love that, but to get compliments from family members, you know. Yeah. To say you did a you did a great. That was that was great. Um That's incredible. You know, I, I want to say I wouldn't necessarily say I enjoyed that, so to speak, but it was just like, yeah, okay, I'm that's all I need, you know? Mm. I, I don't need anything else. As far as I'm as far as I'm concerned, this video did its job. And that's all the approval I need. And um, this has been really, really <laughs> glum, is not it? <laughs> no, this is really good. Uh, that's, man. that's very. That's uh, very pe- good. People, people out there listening to this, uh, yeah, you, you've seen just how dark my world is. <laughs> no, man, that's actually that's actually really, really amazing. Um, but for the the one of the last questions we have for today, um, if you do, you have any advice for anyone who would want to get into um f1 like content creation basically um just make sure that you're doing it for the love of doing it and also just go go going with an open mind don't pay attention to any detractors um be prepared as well to not see any views for a while. Just keep at it, hone your craft, and just yeah, just create content. Just get better, really. Uh, yeah. Make the content that you want to see out there. Yeah, I think yeah, I think that's actually make something like yeah, like you would want to watch basically. Yeah, I mean, there's there are still gaps out there and you know there's still there are still pieces of content that need to be created um you know like and i hope they do come around you know and we do see those types of creators we definitely need more female um content creators out there that sort of um with the greatest respect don't just limit themselves to vlogging because it's it's almost akin to um you know the best way I would describe this is you know someone saying I'm gonna create a um I'm gonna create a podcast or I'm gonna create uh, a vlogging channel it's like cool what sets you apart from everyone else yeah. 
Like, go ahead if you want to do it. But, you know, surely there's something out there. Because, I mean, like, yeah, there's a lot of F1 YouTube channels nowadays. But there are, you know, there are, you know, yeah, what am I, doing? What am I trying to find here? Um, there's definitely medians in which have not been explored yet, which can be. A female concert creator that does a lot of storytelling, I do not know, or I don't search for it, because last thing I want to do after after I've created videos is to look at more videos. Mm -hmm. But there definitely needs to be an increased presence there. At the same time, however, um, I do know how vilified a lot of them are by a lot of the... Uh, <laughs> they definitely get scrutinized a lot more than what us dudes are. And that's sad for sure. And it's a stigma that needs to be fought in, that, in whatever light. But hopefully those content creators do come along because, you know, it would only help um, the sport and the content creating community. And uh, I think that's all we have for uh, today. I just want to quickly, by the way, take this time um, to for you, Josh, uh, to thank you um before we end uh for again everything that you've done for me personally uh in my own quote career uh in, in no worries i just want to say thank you yeah that. yeah for sure um i will send you the hospital bill soon though for uh for my voice box which at this time is uh running away yeah, i'll pay I'll, I'll cover that man um but yeah it's a good, it's a good thing we got free health care here in new zealand um oh. so it won't cost you a cent <laughs> Unbelievable, Unbelievable. communist. We, we've got we've got no army to spend our money on. <laughs> communist. You guys don't have we, a we, two we're... billion dollar army. Unbelievable. No, we just we just make our tanks out of sheets, and uh, well, we haven't been invaded yet. <laughs> Use kangaroos or whatever as guns. It's perfect. Oh my god, <laughs> kangaroos. Let's go. Stereotypes of weight. All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you, Josh, for joining us. Um, episode. I, I don't, gee, don't we're filming this on may 5th so i have no idea when this will be out so um when it does it does uh so i think this is episode three but it's whatever thank you everyone for joining us uh we'll see you all later in at the time in a few weeks for episode four Bye -bye. You. what an episode thank you so much to josh for coming on and I hope I see you very soon. It was a great conversation. I loved how open Josh was to talk about things that really bug him and how he really goes in and makes his YouTube video. Again, thank you, Josh, and I'll always be rooting for you, man. Well, yet yeah, another episode of Behind the Wheel is wrapped up. Join me in a few weeks again for a very special guest, starting with an A and ending with an S. Maybe you guys will pick up on that. Maybe you won't. See you then. Bye-bye.